We're going to look at a wonderful blessing the Lord has given us today that you might again not think that this is uh, would be necessarily a blessing or a privilege, but it's a privilege of not being under the thumb or under the control of the devil. Uh, Satan no longer need control us or be in charge of our lives. We can have power and victory over Satan himself. I want to look at very quickly at three passages with you today. We start with First Peter chapter five and and verse eight. It says, be of sober spirit, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but resist him firm in the faith. So we know, first of all, from this passage that the devil wants to trip us up. He wants to destroy us. And I think he is more interested in destroying the believer than the unbeliever. After all, he already has the unbeliever in his uh, his camp, and he's already taking that unbeliever in the direction of hell. He wants to keep the unbeliever from seeing the greatness of the Lord. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 tells us that he blinds the eyes of the unbeliever that they might not see the glory of Jesus Christ. So he's actively involved in that. But for the believer, he is going about seeking someone to devour, it says. He wants to trip up the Christian. He wants to destroy their lives. He wants to keep them from being fruitful and effective for the Lord. Well, Peter says that we are to resist him. How do we fight the devil? Well, we are to resist him. Uh, another passage, however, it says it a, a little more, gives us a little bit more on that. And that is in James chapter four and uh, verse seven. He says this, be, be subject therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So there he goes a little further. Peter tells us to resist the devil and that's a good thing. But now James says, if you do so, he will flee from you. How do we combat the power of the devil? Well, we do so by resisting him in such a way that, that he, he basically gives up and he flees. He cannot stand before you, and therefore he runs from you. So the scripture never talks to us in the, the epistles in the New Testament church about doing some kind of demonic warfare. It tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from you. And that's the power the Lord gives you as the Holy Spirit is within you, as he strengthens you. But there's one more passage I'd like to take you to, and that's in, J in Revelation, actually, in chapter 12, verses uh, 9 through 11. This is a different context. We're in the midst of the tribulation period, and the devil now has been thrown out of heaven. He has had access, apparently, to the heavenly realms uh, ever since he was cast out of heaven to begin with. He no longer resides there but he has access to the heavenly realms until the midpoint of what we call the tribulation period uh, that is being described in the book of Revelation. In chapter 12, he is now cast out of heaven. He no longer has any access whatsoever to the heavenly places. And when that happens, uh, he very uh, he's very angry and he's very desirous of doing any harm he can to both Israel and the people of God, the children of God. So we pick that up in chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So he is cast out, and all the demonic creatures that had followed him are cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and power and the, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren have been thrown down, and he who accuses them before our God day and night. And so we have a, a really a shout of joy in that the one who has accused the believers throughout all the ages no longer has any ability to do that. But then we go on to verse 11. And he overcame, and they, they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the word of their test, their witness, and they did not love their life even to death. Well, the, the heavens are free of Satan, but what about the people on the earth? As Satan comes down here in great theory, knowing his time is limited, and he wants to do as much damage as possible. But it tells us here, we need not fear even for these people because they overcame him in, by, in, by two means. One is the blood of the lamb. That is the cross work of Christ, the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ is the means by which we overcome the power of the devil. And secondly, because of the word of their witness. 
And therefore, we have the word of truth here uh, that these people also have to give them the strength and the wisdom to combat the devil. And so Satan is real, and he is really angry, and he really wants to accuse and destroy, but we have the means by which we can resist him and defeat him uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ and the, the word of God that he's given us. That's a great blessing, and we really probably have no idea how great of a blessing it really is. <laughs> 